Yeah. Shimon, we're, we're also learning about some other cases that involve the Scorpion unit. What can you share about that? Right, and this is a unit that these officers were part of that was this crime fighting, aggressive policing that has now no longer, the police chief disbanded that group after uh, the Tyree Nichols beating. Um, the DA here telling me, finally, we're getting some numbers, and finally we're being told that it's up to about 100 cases that the district attorney could be now reviewing that these five officers were part of. They were part of uh, 75 cases that the DA is now reviewing, and then there's another other 25 from a, an additional officer who's not been criminally charged but was fired. You'll recall it's uh, Preston Hemphill. He was one of the other officers on scene uh, the night of the incident. And so he was fired as a result of, of his actions by the police department. And now his cases uh, are also under review. So about 100 cases in total. And it could grow. And some of these cases could be dismissed over some of the activity by these officers, but that is a significant number. And finally, for the first time, we're getting those numbers from the DA. So again, more fallout again, again from this incident, and obviously there's still a lot more that is going to come out. We're expecting more video, more audio to come out in the coming weeks that the police say uh, they're still reviewing. And once they uh, make some decisions about additional disciplinary action against some officers, they will release that video, Casey. All right, Shimon, thanks very much for your reporting on this today. We really appreciate it. We're gonna go now to Shreveport, Louisiana, where Officer Alexander Tyler is now facing a negligent homicide charge in the death of Alonzo Bagley. Body cam video now showing the moment that Bagley, who was unarmed and fleeing, was shot and killed earlier this month. Tyler and his partner were responding to a 911 disturbance call when they first approached Bagley in his apartment. Tyler's partner then follows Bagley into a bedroom where Bagley eventually jumps from the second floor balcony and a chase then begins. Once outside, Tyler's partner yells, he went that way, Ty. Five seconds later, there's a gunshot. Here's that moment, and we do want to give you a warning. This is very difficult to watch. He went, hey, he went that way, Ty. Officer Tyler was also wearing a body camera. Here is his footage. And again, we want to warn you, this is graphic. Black, black male, blue shirt, running towards the door park. Be followed. Where is he? Where is he? Where'd he go? Within seconds, the officers begin rendering aid. Both are visibly and audibly distraught. No, I'm going. No, man. No. You're good. You're good. No, man. Come on, dude. This Come match. on, man. Send the EMS right now. 1018. 1018. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. No pressure. No pressure. Stay with me, man. <laughs> That's the officer that you can hear crying. Bagley was pronounced dead at the hospital. CNN's Ryan Young joins us now. Uh, with us to talk some more about these two cases, we have criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, prosecutor Bernarda Villalona and retired Los Angeles Police Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Uh, thank you both for being here. And Sergeant Dorsey, let me start with you and let's start with what we just saw that video. Uh, showing Alonzo Bagley. I, I, it's so hard. It's so hard to watch. I mean, when, when you see it, when you read the report, um, was this negligent homicide? Is that the right charge here? What do you see? Well, listen, I'm not an attorney, but I think that, you know, the charge could certainly be more substantive. I mean, you got a police officer running with his handgun. <laughs> that's not what we're taught. Tactically, uh, that's uh, deplorable. And then to know that uh, he shot this man, why? Because he ran. Listen, uh, suspects running is inherent to police work. And we see time and time again, officers shooting black men because they run. And I find it so offensive and off-putting that this attorney representing 
uh, this officer would say that the mere presence, the mere existence of a black man is a threat. It's problematic. And so did he know when he ran with his gun that he was going to shoot him? I would have to say yes. Why else do you have it out? You only draw your weapon when you're going to discharge it. And you only discharge it because you want to kill somebody, because you want to stop a threat when there's an imminent threat against you or someone else. And that didn't exist. I appreciate you underscoring the fact that he was running with his gun because I, I wondered actually about that that very point as someone who's not had the kind of training that you have have gone through in your career. Uh, Bernardo, what challenges do you foresee for the prosecution and defense in this case? How's that going to play out in your view? So in terms of the prosecution, the prosecution is going to have an issue. They're going to have to have an issue in the sense of there is that split second where you don't actually see the hands of this man. And unfortunately, that gives the defense a way out in the sense of trying to describe what was the threat in his mind. Either way, the question is going to be for the jury, if it goes to a jury trial, is whether it was reasonable for this officer to use deadly force. Was it reasonable for him to see or foresee or believe that this man was a threat to him, that there was an imminent threat of deadly physical injury or serious bodily injury. That's going to be the question for the jury. It's still early on, but the first step, there has been an arrest. There are charges for negligent homicide, and then we'll just have to take it from there. Yeah. Um, I want to switch in and focus a little bit on, on Tyree Nichols uh, before I let uh, both of you go. Um, Sergeant Dorsey, there was a sixth Memphis police officer fired a seventh was put on leave. Do you expect more charges to unfold in that case? I absolutely expect more charges and I expect the district attorney, if he does his job properly, uh, to dismiss more cases. Listen, they're talking about a hundred cases, perhaps. Uh, I said this in the very beginning when this first happened, that these officers were a term that they use, compromise. They gave misleading statements in the midst of an administrative hearing. In other words, they're liars. And so while they're investigating current cases, they need to look at everybody who's sitting in jail right now because of the Memphis Five and anybody else on that police department who's comprised, compromised, anybody who's on their Giglio list. Right now, some folks are sitting in jail and they should be issued a get out of jail free card. And Bernarda, all five of the officers who have been charged with murder have pleaded not guilty. We saw that today. Can you walk us through what happens next in, in those trials? Well, we expected that. We expected all five officers to plead not guilty. So today was the formal chance for them to appear before a judge and the judge tell them officially what their charges are and for them to enter a, an official plea. Where we go from now, we go through several pretrial conferences to determine whether the cases are going to go to trial or whether any of those officers will be pleading guilty. And that pleading guilty part is going to be a huge conversation for the prosecutor to determine if they want to flip any of the officers to cooperate against the most culpable out of the group. But in my opinion, if I were the prosecutor, I wouldn't flip any. We're going to trial with all five. The question would be, will it be five separate juries or will it be one? All right, Bernardo Villalona, Sergeant Dorsey, thank you both uh, very much for being with us today.